This video will present a really interesting paper on using GANs for representation learning from Google's DeepMind Research Lab. So the headline idea is that they're going to revisit this BIGAN framework, but they're going to replace the low capacity uh, DC GAN model that came out in 2014 or 2015, and they're going to replace it with the state of the art in 2019, the big GAN model. And the big GAN model has way more parameters than the DC GAN, and then it also has things like spectral normalization, self-attention layers, and then also, uh, oh, the, uh, it has like a projection layer for the class embedding. I don't even think the DC GAN has class embeddings in the framework at all. So this by GAN model is this idea of the generator is going to sample its Z from like a Gaussian prior and then produce these images that the discriminator is going to tell if they're real or fake. But then the idea is also that there's going to be an encoder part of the generator that'll map the images back into latents. And so this latent uh, space is now gonna correspond with different images and thus form a, uh, a feature space that, can be that you can stack a logistic regression classifier on top of and then train like ImageNet classifier, CIFAR10 classifiers, stuff like that. So GANs for representation learning, it's like there's a quote from Richard Feynman that is almost pretty frequently put into GAN blog posts and generative models It says, uh, what I can't create, I don't understand. And so the idea is that the ability to generate data in a, in a domain necessitates a high-level understanding of the semantics of said domain. And GANs are using uh, deep neural networks that have abstract uh, representation learning compared to something like an autoregressive model that would put like an explicit density conditioned on what it's seen before or like a variational encoder that doesn't quite have the capacity of a GAN. So it's definitely interesting to think about the semantics captured in the like dueling dragon deep neural networks and generative adversarial networks and how we can use these representations for tasks like uh, image classification or object detection or semantic segmentation. So this is the idea of the BIGAN or ALI adversarial learned inference and the idea is that you're going to map the data back to the latent space Z. So you have the G of Z which is the generator that takes in uh, like a random vector usually sampled from like a Gaussian prior and produces images. And then you've got E of X, which is the encoder that takes images and then maps it back to the latent space. So the idea would be to stack a logistic regression classifier on top of the Z feature. So you would have, so you've trained this model and now you would take your data set and you would pass it all through the encoder. And now each uh, image in your data set is being converted to like a vector of features. So then you would stack a logistic regression classifier on top of those features. So again, the previous uh, model in BIGAN was effective. It did show that this framework has some promise. So what they're going to do in DeepMind is they're going to take that DC GAN model and they're going to replace it with the big GAN model. So this is just the loss function from a high level idea. The uh, discriminator is now going to take in the X and the Z rather than just the image. So the discriminator doesn't just classify the image as real or fake. It also has the uh, like vector that produced the image and it's going to sort of say, uh, do I think like this uh, vector may this like uh, latent vector makes sense as well as the image. So again, here's the idea. The um, Z comes from some Gaussian prior and the generator uh, produces images. And then the encoder takes the images and produces a latent code. And okay, so this is an additional uh, modification that the DeepMind paper makes to the BIGAN. BIGAN would just take in the X and the Z and then map it right into real or fake. But what they do in uh, the big BIGAN is they separate the F into a convnet and the H into a uh, multilayer perceptron. And then they produce these unary scores that are like real or fake just for the image and just for the latent. So, they have the joint distribution of X and Z, but then they also have just of X and then just of Z. And so I think, it, uh, and I think we're going to cover it more later in the presentation. So this is the complete picture of the big BIGAN uh, framework. So one of the things that they do is uh, they don't, when they go from E, X to Z, they don't just uh, deterministically map it. They have this... Uh, additional term that they use in the big GAN where the Z, the uh, E of X predicts the mean and the variance of like a Gaussian prior on Z. And then uh, when Z is sampled for future images, there's a 
like an epsilon, an additional stochastic term, which is sampled from another distribution. So then another thing that they test with their uh, new framework is the importance of these, this and this uh, unary loss scores. So they find that the uh, unary loss on the X has a much greater significance than the Z. And you know, this is pretty intuitive because, uh, you know, this is like the real or fake on just the image. And this is just the real or fake on the latent code. You would expect the image to contain more information. So one of the interesting thing uh, generally is invertibility in deep learning where X to Z and then Z back to X, it kind of has to be like this one-to-one -one bijective mapping in order to really go back and forth. So it's interesting also to think if this technique uh, helps prevent mode collapse and pushes the uh, data to cover different modes such that you can translate back to Z and recover it. So the big uh, contribution in the paper is that they're showing how important the capacity of the models are. So when they have one third of the capacity, the generator is unstable and the classification is terrible. Two thirds of the capacity, again, is substantially worse. So the conclusion from this kind of, uh, like controlling this variable shows that as, as we get better generative models, we expect this by GAN framework to eventually succeed with unsupervised representation learning, like really well, like even better than uh, the labeled samples might. So this is the result. The top is our uh, images from ImageNet. And then uh, the bottom are when you uh, encode the images and then decode them again. So this is, you take this as X and then you encode it into a vector E of X and then you pass that vector through the generator and th this is what comes out. So you see that they're definitely different images but they're not that different. So it shows like what the model learns. And then this is the real interesting result. This is the classification accuracy of this technique when you put a classifier on top of the representations. So it uh, outperforms, outperforms things like uh, exemplar where you uh, use data augmentation. It's like a self-supervised feature learning technique. And then it performs on par with another technique from uh, DeepMind, this uh, contrastive predictive coding, which will be covered in a future video on this channel. So some of the thoughts uh, reading this paper is it's definitely interesting to think about uh, these self-supervised learning tasks like predicting rotations or jigsaw permutations compared to just unsupervised learning and mapping the features in frameworks such as this. And it's definitely interesting to think about how you might add a rotation loss like uh, feature stabilizer into this framework as well. Thanks for watching this video on the big BIGAN model. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.